Good morning, Vincent. How are you doing today? Good. How you doing, sir? Absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you what, man. I want to thank you right off the bat for everything that you have done and what you are currently doing. And this book right here is a book of education because there's a lot of us in this nation that have no clue. <laughs> thank you so much for that. To be so open and honest, I mean, what, what did you hear in your heart that said, get this book out there and let's get these people in a place where they can understand what is truly going on at the border? It was hard for me to watch the demonization of the Border Patrol career field and the false information that was getting thrown out. Uh, I know my platform in, in the media. I know my platform from, from acting. And if I have some kind of a voice, I feel like it's my duty to, do, to use that for, for the right reasons. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right about that. I mean, that's taking it to the next level. That is so cool that you admit that to yourself, that you've, you've got a voice. Now, what am I going to do with it? And how is it going to affect my community? Yes, sir. How do you face the backlash when, when, when you are known for your acting? Because I've, I've had to deal with this in radio that people look at you going, really, dude, are, are you you're facing facing a cancellation here? Yeah, no, I know. I think, you know, I, I believe in three things more than anything. It's God, family and country. Yes. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of what, what I stand by. I believe in what we have here in America, and it's a beautiful thing, but there's a dichotomy to that beautiful thing. Uh, and so writing this book in the fair voice, uh, if people don't like that, I feel like, well, that's that's just the way it's going to have to be. Uh, I accept all of it, whatever comes from this book. If people cancel me, then so be it. Yep. Uh, I'll find new ways of making money and continue to use my voice. Vincent, one of the things that uh, it, it's, it's almost like you've been to hell and you're standing on that borderline right now looking at us going, you don't want to go in there, but we got to do something about this place called hell. Yes, sir. I, I agree. I mean, it's 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 hell in, in multiple different ways, right? It's hell because it's a hard career field with multiple different challenges, very complex. But it's also hell to watch human people uh, re- willing to risk their lives for an opportunity at America. And where do you stand on that? Right. It's a very challenging topic. And everybody is is, is in, who puts on that uniform has to answer those questions on the border. And it's it's not easy. And people do it for 30 years plus. And, and I commend anyone who does that career. I mean, and once said to me, what would have happened if your German born grandparents weren't allowed in the United States? And that makes me open up my eyes as to what's going on here, because what happens if my German born grandparents wouldn't have been allowed to come here? Right, exactly. And and what, what do you think your German born grandparents would have done and willing to risk just to get you here? Everything, everything. I guarantee it. Yes, sir. And, and, and that's and I find that inspiring. Do you? Absolutely. I get it. Right. I, I mean, I'm empathetic towards it. I won the lotto. I was born here. You know what I mean? My grandmother, you know, forced her way to America and became a citizen. And and and, you know, I'm just going to continue to uphold that belief and, and honor what she gave me. Are you shocked, Vincent, about how the U.S. policy is like our tax laws? Every time we turn around, something is constantly changing. Yeah, absolutely. I think. Uh, it's funny, every kind of presidential candidate comes in and kind of scrapes the frosting off the top and makes a slight change, and they think it's fixed. Uh, this is a very multi-layered uh, system that needs to be addressed on every level, and uh, nothing in the past, I don't know, 30 years has really solidified uh, my opinion of of working in, in an acting like really – substantial change in immigration policy. Yeah, and then that, to me, that's where we become blind. So many of us do. And we, we, we rush to the, the news networks and the apps, and we try to figure out what is the answer. And it's like, wow. But when you pick up this book, Borderline Defending the Home Front, we finally have something in print that's saying, hey, look, maybe you need to learn and lean in a different direction and understand what's going on. Yeah, I agree. The goal was to educate people who didn't understand it, to give them a foundation of information so they can stand on. So how do you feel inside your heart when you know darn good and well that Washington can see what's going on, but they keep turning their back? I I become injured as an American uh, citizen when it's like, wait, guys, guys, it's right there in front of us. Yeah, it's it's a hard thing to to watch. And I know it's probably just as hard for the agent's boots on ground to do the job and feeling like no one's really uh, giving them a voice. Uh, it's something that I think will be addressed in the next elections. I think it's it's the biggest, probably the biggest catalyst of who and 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 who we vote for. It's very very challenging times. I would love for more people to come down to the border, join me, and mm-hmm. see it firsthand to really make a good educated decision on how they feel about it.
Yeah, because you know how propaganda is in this nation. I mean, they're going to show off the pictures that either make it look like there's peace or there's or there's there's roughage, and and it's like, okay, but where's the in between here? Where where are the tiny victories for this for some people? Yeah, absolutely. I think when you talk about this immigration um, argument or conversation, it's always going to have two items that people don't address, immigration policy itself and as well as homeland security. And both of those have to be met in some way, shape or form where we're all happy with. And currently, it seems that we're not doing that. We have kind of an a very open system at the moment that is allowing a lot of people to come into America, which means we have a very weak Homeland Security standing. And that is a scary time for a lot of us. Well, scary times. I wish people would look at this. Look at what's going on in Gaza. People going into Egypt. They can't even get into Egypt unless it's in small numbers. And what about those that are escaping Ukraine to go to Poland? We, we aren't looking at what, what, what could be the possibilities of something in our own country. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Correct. And, and you would think that we would learn from something like that because we're screaming human rights, human rights. But but whoa, wait a second. What about human rights here? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, a lot of people are looking outside when we still need to look within. Yeah, we really need to check our own boundaries. And, and the, the Border Patrol is understaffed, just like so many businesses. But with so many naysayers, why is it understaffed? I would think they would go down there and make it happen. Well, it's hard to do a job where everyone vilifies you. It's yeah. hard to do a job and help more out. Right now, currently, they have the most people retiring, like volunteer retiring early just to get out of the career field. It's not easy when everyone demonizes you. It's not easy to do a job that you could be proud of, but everyone looks at you as if you're the bad guy. And so recruitment has been very low. And, uh, you know, what used to be 20,000 agents boots on ground is now roughly about 19,000. And it's lower, right? It's slowly lowering. And so my another part of this book is hopefully people can take a, another look at this career and say, you know what? I want to do this. I want the challenges of this and I want to protect our nation. Let me ask you an honest to God question. But when it comes to immigration, most of us think of, of, of the border, but yet we're not thinking about who's coming in from Greece, who's coming in from, let's say, Iran. I mean, th- there are people immigrating to this country every single day that aren't on that border, but they're in this country. That's correct, sir. I think every year, I think last year we allowed with legal immigration process uh, 1.5 million people into this country. That's from any any nation that, that attempted to come here. 1.5 million came across legally through our system last year. And that's from every country. What makes this the promised land? I mean, I live here. I guess I'm spoiled. But 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 what is the rest of the world seeing that we we're taking advantage of? I think we we sit in a position of of um, you know privilege. We don't yeah. see whatever right. Like this land, no matter what, you see everyone running towards it, but no one running away from it. Very few, right? Did you go towards the, the, the Mexican border? I don't see guys running from America, jumping into Mexico and going south. Right. We still have opportunity. You know, we still are the place of hard work pays, and. Uh, that in itself, the pride of America, I think, is very important. What the flag genuinely stands for, not what beliefs are getting pulled left and right ideologies, but what the Amer- American flag stands for is a land of opportunity and freedom. And yeah. people still want the opportunity to have that. Yeah, see, I take that word united very seriously. In everything that I do, we are united. That means we're not filled with judgment. We're not going to sit here and compare ourselves. We are united. Yes, sir. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. How do we kind of ease up on the pressures of the job of the United States in educating safe and illegal entry? Because, I mean, it, it's like we somehow, some way we've got to get other people involved in this and not make it so government like. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's one of the issues. Right. I think this is kind of a seven layer cake and we have yeah. to address each layer uh, on its own. One of those has to be education. We have to educate other countries on exactly how to go to the process of becoming a legal citizen. And we also have to streamline that process. There's individuals that have to wait 12 years. And in those 12 years, if they make one mistake, say a DUI, well, then they're not afforded that same opportunity anymore. And so there's things we really need to look at. Uh, and when you make the system a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more focused, well, then you'll have more people want to do it the right way. Currently, since is since illegal immigration is almost incentivized by allowing them to enter into the country and wait for an immigration judge for some, somewhere around five years, well, why would you ever come out, come the legal way when you can just come, come in three days? 
You know, one of the things that I would love to figure out how I can get involved in, Vincent, is is furthering the friendship and the openness of when they do arrive in our cities. And because they're scared. They they don't have the, the proper housing that a lot of us have. And, and they're going into grocery stores and they're wowed because, I mean, these grocery stores have so many things that they never had. And you try to have a conversation. There's a, there, there's a language barrier. And it's like, I need to figure out a way to become even friendlier in, in, this, in this place of change. I agree. It's a, it's a it's a tough time for those who genuinely came here for the opportunity of just being in America and have a more fruitful life for themselves. And those people do deserve to have some kind of guidance in that sense of how to get assimilated into America and how to get into this world of, of, of understanding what they need to do to continue to succeed. Are the cities near the border, are they becoming poor? Because, I mean, it just seems like everything is coming in and it's like, OK, so we have no room for anything else. Yeah, well, the cities in the border are doing really well is that, you know, they know what their max capacity is. They know when they're overwhelmed by resources. And so they're starting to bust a lot of the illegal immigrants to do different areas of either the state or other states who have, you know, sanctuary cities. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're struggling just as much as anyone else taking on so many individuals at once. And so they're doing everything they can to, to mitigate that, to manage it. I, I totally understand that because how did my grandparents get from New York City to the state of Wyoming? <laughs> right, correct. <laughs> somebody had to send them out there, and 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 they had to have guidance, and somebody had to show them the way. In fact, one of the, one of the greatest things that I ever had was that my grand my grandfather brought a a metal bed from Germany with them, and I thought, what in God's name would you do that for something so heavy? And he said, Guy, that's that was where my wife and I fell in love, and and it's, and he would not let go of that bed. Yeah, that's. I mean, I get it. I, my grandmother still has stuff. My mom still has stuff that my grandmother has. What are you learning? Because, I mean, you, you are the forever student in this. And, and as you get stronger with your confidence and courage and being a voice, oh, my God, I just can't imagine what it's like to be the student. You know, I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm heavy into this. I'm writing another book at this time about really, really breaking down immigration policies and yes. what works and what happens in other countries. And so it's, it's a very fascinating subject that's so complex, but I enjoy really trying to get down to the root of how we can make this successful. How do we not lose our country's uh, identity, but how do we still welcome many different cultures and, and everybody, how do we stay a united front? You know, you just painted the picture of Harold and Kumar for me where where he went to Washington and he became an ambassador. I mean, well, uh, dude, you, you are becoming that voice in the way of, I need you on my cabinet. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah, but th that's the thing about it is that is that you have activation. That's the thing. There's there's a lot of us on you know sitting here with, with like armchair quarterbacks, and we're we're trying to predict the moves and make the moves. But you're physically involved in the movement. Yeah, I think you know I've I've just had a very experienced career in many different areas, especially in the, in the military and law enforcement. With my special operations background, I've yeah. seen other countries. I've learned other languages, so I can do the work. Uh, and it, it's no different than what I'm doing here with the Border Patrol. And now that I'm not a Border Patrol agent, I have the freedom of movement when it comes to communication and messaging. Uh, and I know the power of messaging through the media and through television. And so I'm going to continue to do my best to be an advocate for uh, good immigration and can, kind of keeping this this country uh, exactly what everyone runs to, uh, the land of opportunity. To be a part of that special team. You envision it, you practice it, you go through every single movement to make sure that you are physically and mentally prepared for it. Was it what you prepared for or was or was it the nightmare even bigger than what you could ever imagine? If you're talking regarding in the book, with yeah. the book, yeah. um, I'm I'm terrified. Yeah. I've get, I've been got I've been getting hate mail, I've been getting <sighs> death threats. You know, there's people that are so emotionally attached to this conversation, but have very little information of the truth. And they're swayed by, you know, these narratives that are unfair. And so I'm speaking from the truth in this book and I'm getting uh, a lot of hate that I didn't I guess I expected. But uh, it's it's a little frustrating and, it, and it's it's something I didn't know I was going to have to manage. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you speak openly about the experience of not being successful with saving someone. I, I, I would have to have at least three or four days to just go sit by a tree or a rock and deal with it. I mean, how did you just keep pushing forward? 
I think I didn't manage, I didn't deal with a lot of my trauma for many years and I used alcohol to cover that up. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've been sober for four and a half years and I've been deep down the path of wellness. And, uh, you know, I am now realizing how much I just held and I just kind of shoved away deep, deep away. And, uh, and I know how much that affected me. And I'm, I am also part of a program for the border patrol that helps in the resiliency side of things and teaching them how to uh, find different modalities of healing and, and, and being able to debrief stress. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to go through an editing process with the U S government though, in order to put this book together? Cause so many military people have got to go through that system. Uh, no one, because nothing uh, uh, that I mentioned was any kind of classified situation. And okay. two, I'm not an employee of the federal government at the current moment. So um, everything was just, I can do whatever I want and say what I want. I do have a background from special operations. So I understand what OPSEC means and operational security. And so I was very, um, I knew what I what I could put and what I shouldn't put. And so I, I just stayed in that same mentality. Wow. Were you journaling? Because I'm a big journal writer. I've been doing it for 29 years. I mean, I have to get my thoughts onto a page so I can deal with the moment. Yeah, that's it's, it's something I've been doing for many years as well. I've been doing it since I've been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and uh, you know, my writing's only gotten better and better as I continue to do it. I've found it to be a very therapeutic um, response to, to life. And I continue to do it. And that's why when I chose to write the book, it wasn't hard I just kind of uh, rekindled my life uh, in, a, in a chronological order. How did you find that writing voice? Because so many people, they, they've got a lot to say, but to put it on a page, all of a sudden the perfectionist steps out and says, nah, that's not the way you sound. We're not going to go that direction. So how did you find your writing voice? Uh, I don't know if I ever found it. I just write. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, it's I've been very fortunate that my, my writing shows my heart. And that's what was most important to me, that people see the real side of and the intention of what I'm trying to do. Uh, and it's just what I've always done. And so, like I said, I didn't, I, it wasn't like a, a process of finding it. It was just committing to writing the most truth I possibly can and, and seeing how that does. Have you thought about taking it to the next level to host your own podcast where you can take your personal experiences and you, you sit back and go, wait a second, I'm not the only one that's gone through this. I'm going to create podcast episodes that are going to become effective because we need to have a word inside our cars as well as our office as well. We can't just open up a book. Yeah, I do have a podcast it's called the Vinnie rock podcast and yeah i host individuals who do nice. fascinating and that that help help you know I, I just try and inspire motivate and entertain people and so i do have a podcast you know my goal is to continue to write television shows that hopefully uh send a profound message as, message as well and what a war you've been through for the past 18 months even with television shows and acting my god finally maybe this thing is com coming to an end as well yeah, it is coming to an end, but, you know, we're coming into the holiday season, and so Hollywood kind of shuts down. So I imagine there will be no work until mid-January next year. And so, you know, all we can do is sit here and keep journaling and keep writing and keep manifesting new ideas, and hopefully those ideas are impactful that can change the nation. When you were part of the of the Special Forces, did, did you get into AI technology in the way? Because I've, I've been doing so much research on on how AI, AI technology can help out with security. And, and my big thing this morning was based on how the AI... AI can quickly identify facial expressions and people. So it's like, okay, why aren't the AI technology people on the border and, and, and making sure that the right people are getting in? It's very interesting and, and fascinating. No, I, you know, in the military, we haven't, in the border patrol, we haven't messed with it uh, when I was in. Now, I got out in 2015, and so there's been significant changes since. Uh, I imagine it's something is in the works right now to use AI to somehow find a way to make our job a little easier. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, what, what it had to have been one of your biggest fears with, when it comes to drug cartels on that borderline. I mean, we all hear the stories on this side of the fence, but, but is it really like that down there? And could there be a drug cartel war breaking out on our own? soil uh, I wouldn't say on our own soil I you know what the, the fascinating thing about the cartel is they're very smart of not causing too many ripples okay. ripple effects uh, on our side of the border uh, there is you know there is known cartel members here in our side of the country uh, but you know they try and keep their you know their chaos to their own little world so it doesn't stir up too much on our side it's a very interesting complex relationship i, I find it to be fascinating uh but was i scared no part of me you know being a guy that goes to the combat went to the military special ops blah 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 
uh, I kind of welcomed the, the, the craziest firefight in the world and it just never happened on my time. And so, uh, you know, you're always prepared for those. I was going to say, you know, what's really interesting about this, Vincent, is the fact that, you know, we're, we're talking about how they, you know, the borderline and things like that. But if Americans really sat down and really looked at the history of this nation and how Mexico used to stretch up into the United States and the spiritual speaking on this is based on what if they're being called home? What what they're trying to get back to where their family was maybe three, four hundred years ago. Yeah, it's an interesting topic. And that's one of those ones that it's, you know, it's it's no different than the conversation that happens right now with Israel and Gaza and who's supposed to be there and whose land is it, you know, yeah. and, you know, it's it's a very, it can get that complex, but the situation is right now, currently, you know, we have our boundaries, we have our borders as America and we have our laws and we're going to continue to maintain those laws. Yeah, because I think the only time that I've ever heard of anybody American running into Mexico was the way that they drove the Native Americans into Mexico. And it's, and it's like, okay, well, how come we're not talking about that? Let's get everybody back home. Uh, again, that's one of those interesting kind of like stories of history. I think you can go back uh, many years and say if someone originated somewhere as well. Yeah. You want to push everyone out of America now? What's the right answer for that? Yeah. I, I think the only thing we can do is move forward from what we have now and say, okay, how do we make this right? How do we fix this? Or how do we how do we make it better? Yeah. Where can people go to find out more about you and to participate with your word growing forward? Yeah, you can find me at any social media platform. Vincent Rocco Vargas uh, and my podcast is called Vinny Rock Podcast. Uh, you know, I welcome any dialogue, any conversation. I enjoy it. Uh, you guys, if you message me, I will reply. I love it, man. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, sir. You be brilliant today, okay? Yes, sir.